Good morning everybody and welcome to Daily Decode. Today's episode is less sponsored by, but we just kind of want to mention a specific product, which is the fourth element uh, surface wetsuit. Uh, it's a very unusual wetsuit um, and kind of the future of scuba diving. Um, so yeah, we can talk about that a little bit later. As far as the news, um, so the first news story um, comes from the UK, and this is a um, another dead sperm whale has washed up on the uh, on the Norfolk coast. Now, um, a couple of weeks ago, there was like a few. Um, I think there was about three or four. Um, that sort of washed up on the coast of, I believe it was Yorkshire, and um, and that sort of caught headlines. And now another one has uh, kind of washed up a little bit further down. <clears throat> And what scientists are saying, um, obviously they're they're not sort of recommending. It's like don't go out and try and find it. Um, we're uh, we're sort of disposing of it. Um, the last thing that they need is people were sort of going to try and take selfies with it or anything. But um, but what they're saying is that um, this is almost a return to the norm um, because because <laughs> how they. How they uh, sort of their migrationary patterns are is that they typically now obviously sperm whales they're very very deep deep species they spend a lot of time sort of deep uh, in sort of very deep waters but in um, at uh, sort of certain times of the year they spend a lot of time in like the tropics sort of around the uh, the equator almost um, sort of deep down and that's where they sort of breed but then when the sort of male youngs um, the young boys, sperm whales, when they start to uh, sort of grow up, they start to venture off and they become a uh, sort of group of uh, sort of young adolescent guys, uh, and they tend to go up north, um, sort of towards the uh, towards the Arctic, and then they kind of spend a lot of time there, and uh, and then after a few years or something, they start to come back down um, to meet up with the girls again. Unfortunately, this group of males seems to have, uh, basically, they come to sort of Scotland, basically, and instead of taking a right, um, which sort of heads straight down into the Atlantic, uh, they took a left, uh, which is down to the North Sea, and they basically got stuck and um, in sort of very shallow waters. They got confused, and um, <coughs> they just end up washing up on uh, on our shores. But, um, but scientists are basically saying that it sounds sort of very alarming, but actually this was very normal, um, but centuries ago. It's, um, we haven't sort of seen it in recent years because in the um, sort of, oh, I don't know, 19th, 18th sort of centuries, um, we of course went out on boats and we hunted these uh, sort of sperm whales. So their numbers were kind of dwindling. So we didn't have this sort of massive migration and the chances of them sort of taking that wrong turn were relatively low but um, but yeah now that we obviously don't hunt them anymore their numbers are increasing so the chances of them taking that wrong turn are actually increasing again so it's not a nice thing it kind of is a signal of a nice thing saying that their um, their overall numbers are increasing um, but yeah apparently this was quite a, a normal thing uh, sort of hundreds of years ago and um, yeah this is almost a return to the norm um, what if but yeah we start hunting them again so then they don't come in <clears throat> Let's not. Um. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm pro hunt. We want to stop these. We want to stop these poor male whales, sperm whales, beaching or whatever on our in Yorkshire. Um, we're gonna have to hunt them. There's no other option, I think, Mark. I think a better alternative might be trying to find a way to uh, prevent them from coming down the sort of east coast of the United Kingdom. Um, um, can we not give them Google Maps? <laughs> Or just, like maybe... just a massive, yeah, a massive sort of turn here sign uh, <laughs> yeah. under the water. Or, or, um, you know, when you go to like um, like, a, like a trail park or whatever, and you've got a map, and it's like, a, you are here, take this just, route here. Just, just, put just a small water. circle with a red arrow on it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just you are turn here. this way. Turn, <clears throat> turn right, don't turn left or whatever. Yeah, it's it's sad, but um, but yeah, reading into it, it is quite interesting that mm. yeah, this is kind of a um, a return to the norm because um, yeah, they basically we used to hunt them, so the uh, the numbers used to uh, sort of decrease so mm. much. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. Obviously, they um, they say don't 
don't try and sort of look out and find them. If you do, if you're just like walking the dog on the beach for your exercise, um, if you do come across one, then just sort of call the local authorities and they'll um, they'll sort it out. Um, but um, yeah, hopefully this is this is all. It's only about sort of five or six. Um, I think have so far been uh, sort of discovered. So this is just a, a fairly small bachelor group um, who yeah just took the wrong turn. Um, Bless them. <clears throat> In other, socks. yeah, in other slightly more um, sort of optimistic news, <laughs> a um, a study on some corals. I think this was in Bikini Atoll. Um, have basically started to recover from coral bleaching. So. Um, now, obviously, we're all aware that uh, there's a lot of coral bleaching um, sort of around the world because of increasing uh, sort of water temperatures, and all that basically is is that the uh, the coral, because uh, coral has a small little animal in it, um, and then it's almost like it works with uh, sort of plants in the coral to create this kind of symbiotic relationship. But the the plants themselves are what give the coral uh, sort of colour. And when the water temperatures get sort of too high, the uh, the animal inside basically kicks out the plants and that's why it bleaches, but the animals can't live without the plants, so it just dies. Um, but actually, scientists were studying a, a small patch on a on a tiny um, uh, sort of reef somewhere in, uh, I think it was Bikini Atoll, somewhere in the Pacific Ocean. Um, oh, sorry, it was, Kiritimati Atoll uh, in the Pacific Ocean and um, and yeah because they've been going through sort of heat waves and they've had sort of El Nino sort of every year um, they the coral had started to bleach and they were like oh no so they sort of kept coming back and just sort of uh, sort of monitoring it but they found that it's actually starting to recover even though it's still in sort of warmer waters i think one of them described it as hot water bath kind of temperatures mm. um that they're actually or some of the species are starting to come back however one thing that they did take note on is that it was more specifically um, corals that had no human interaction uh, so whether that's sort of trying to help them or um sort of People go there and their uh, their suntan lotion sort of comes off and that sort of kills off the coral. They're saying that the the coral that's left completely alone tends to do the best, um, which is very interesting. Um, most people have been sort of saying that, um, yeah, actually, no, once it's uh, sort of gone, it's gone. But uh, but yes, this almost is a is a spark of maybe it could come back. Um, but that's yeah, the one, thing. Um, we yeah. we always seem to we we know what's best. It's like we don't. Man. Nature has its own thing, doesn't it? <clears throat> we we are literally yeah. clueless when it comes to this sort of thing. We know how to destroy things, and yeah, we yeah. think we know the best way to bring it back. <clears throat> but if you leave things, yes, it might take yeah. time. But but the, the earth or Mother Nature will heal itself, or it will, or it's learnt. The thing is with that sort of coral, it's potentially learnt from obviously the the increase of water. So it's adapted so then mm. like you say because it's in hotter water it can thrive which means if this happens again slightly hotter water uh, the effect might not be as bad in future bleachings maybe you know it's, it's like a learn and adapt yeah. scenario yeah um, maybe no obviously it's yeah obviously it's not all coral species because corals are all sort of different species yeah um but um but yeah it's it's a it's a slight glimmer of hope um that yeah hopefully there is a um yeah a colorful side on the other side of bleaching um because they're saying that obviously with all like paris accords and all those kind of environmental um sort of pacts we're trying to reduce um, sort of ocean temperatures, um, trying to get it so it's no more than like uh, hopefully one and a half uh, sort of degrees over like pre-industrial, um, post-industrial um, uh, sort of water temperatures. Because if it's like if it's only one and a half degrees over, that's uh, that just means that we're only going to be uh, sort of destroying up to seventy-five percent of coral. Uh, if it's two degrees, that's like ninety-nine percent of corals uh, will probably end up dying. But um, yeah, that's right. why these kind of things are. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's why these kind of things are sort of so important to sort of study. And um, that oh, hopefully, if we do 
because I don't think we're on track for a sort of one and a half. I think we're sort of going way over it, unfortunately. Um, but hopefully mm. this is a, uh, a slightly positive side that basically says that, you know what, actually uh, sort of some coral may be able to survive it. But um, we don't know. It's still early days. Um, and also as well, like we've said it in previous Daily Scuba Deuces, they're finding new coral reef systems in colder waters all the time. So it might be a case of the, the warm water ones. Yes, sadly, you know, they might be going or they might have to adapt, but it's not like everything's lost potentially there are a lot of unknowns because i think the ocean's quite big i think yeah it's fairly fairly large i think it covers about seven tenths of our yeah our maybe planet, but <laughs> so there's uh, there's probably stuff just, out there yeah that we've not seen so yeah it's just they they take their time they're uh, they're not mm. the, the fastest of growers it's it's not like sort of replanting some trees and that sort of takes a few years to uh, grow these take like centuries to uh, to grow so you never know in like 200 years yeah we might have some coral reefs off the coast of um, of essex well <laughs> I, I, I can't wait for that to happen i can't wait to <laughs> in 200 years daily dk we I'll can uh, see you there <laughs> It'll be our great great grandchildren or something. This is linear for yeah. all our children. They're going to take over the Simply Scuba channel. It's just going to be the Newmans and the Johnsons forever. Yeah. And we might, we eventually might hit 100k <laughs> <laughs> by then. On, on our deathbeds. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Um, um, so yeah, I mentioned uh, sort of earlier today's uh, today's episode of Daily Deco. It's not really sponsored um, because Fourth Element didn't really ask us to do this. It's just that it's quite an interesting product. Um, so we're talking about the Fourth Element Surface Wetsuit. So the Surface Wetsuit instead of like a petroleum based neoprene uh, it's actually made out of Ulex Pure. Mm -hmm. uh, and what Ulex Pure is. It, I don't really know to be honest, but it's basically a plant that they uh, that they grow, uh, and then they sort of harvest it, and then they refine it into this kind of foam, which is very similar in properties to neoprene, um, but obviously it's far better for the environment and uh, far better for you as well. Um, but it doesn't just stop at the um, at the neoprene. So they use a water-based glue. Um, so when it's in the water, now obviously it's not gonna just sort of fall apart as soon as it hits the water, but this water-based glue isn't gonna be sort of seeping uh, sort of small amounts of uh, adhesive into the, uh, into the water. Blind stitching, which just means that you're going to stay uh, sort of much warmer, but also the ink that they've used on their um, sort of logo is water-based as well, um, so that's not going to be uh, sort of damaging the ecosystem. Everything about it, even the lining, the linings on the inside, I think that's 95% of them is post-consumer uh, plastic bottles um, that they've just uh, sort of recycled, cleaned up, and then that sort of turns into uh, sort of fabric. So it's very, very good for the environment and. And it's when you first look at it it looks a lot like a surfing wetsuit because it's got that kind of chest zip across the front um, and, um, and it's very sort of stretchy big sort of open panel so you can move around but obviously you can wear it whilst uh, scuba diving as well uh, at the moment they've only brought out a, uh, a blue version which is quite funky uh, most wetsuits they tend to be black and boring uh, but this is a nice and navy blue but also uh, sort of men's and women's um, but uh, yeah, lots of flexibility in it. They uh, they really made it, instead of just being a scuba diving suit, uh, they've made it so that it's, as the name suggests, for all sorts of surfing uh, or sort of surface water sports. So if you do like stand up pedal boards or surfing or bodyboarding or whatever it is that you do, uh, as well as scuba diving, then yeah, this could be a good alternative because it's got that kind of flex. Because most scuba diving wetsuits, they're built to sort of resist that pressure change as we go down. Um, so they're not as flexible as a uh, as a surfing wetsuit. So yeah, definitely check out the uh, the fourth element surface. Um, yeah, I've seen one in the um, in the in the flesh, um, so to speak. And um, yeah, it's it's sort of typical fourth element uh, sort of build quality. So it's a lovely suit. Comes in a uh, sort of a cotton uh, sort of drawstring bag. So uh, again, no plastic bags, uh, sort of in shipping and all that. So um, yeah, yeah, I quite like it. Cool. And I think this is kind of kind of the way that the industry is probably going to end up going, um, starting to drop the uh, sort of petroleum-based uh, sort of wetsuits because 
they're not good for you, they're not good for the environment. So um, yeah, we're just going to uh, sort of create these plant-based wetsuits that are just grown out of the earth. It's clever. It's very <laughs> clever. Or in a lab. Yeah. 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 It, in a mould. <clears throat> just over you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still can't wait for the uh, the nanotech web uh, wetsuit. That's going to be like amazing. A spray on. Yeah. <laughs> I reckon. Do you reckon they um when they were developing this wetsuit and they were like, right, we need to dye it. So like, what about squid ink? <laughs> Using that to dye it. I don't know what they. I mean, squid ink quite famously disperses after a while, but um... yeah, but like, I don't know, mix it in with a bit of PVA glue. <laughs> little stick bit of asbestos yeah uh, <laughs> just, what's wrong with that we've worked we've worked so hard on making this suit environmentally friendly let's just capture a bunch of squids and just milk them for their yeah. ink <laughs> oh no I've got I've got a little old lady like ladies <laughs> sitting on a wooden stool <laughs> I, I don't think that's how it works it is, it's exactly how it works <laughs> You need to go back to school, mate, because that's exactly how uh, it works. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the um, the next news story um, comes from the Express, uh, which automatically means you need to take it with a pinch of salt, yeah, because um, there's quite a lot of scaremongering. Um, and well, it, it very much depends how you read the headline. Obviously, it's meant to be kind of terrifying, um, but it's actually quite sort of interesting um, as a scuba diver. And the, the headline is basically: Great white sharks are more than likely in British waters after sightings off the UK coast. Um, so this is nothing particularly new. Um, we have seen great white sharks uh, uh, in our waters before. They're not particularly um, sort of prevalent. We don't see tons of them. Um, but yeah, apparently there are um, sort of more and more sightings of great white sharks around our waters um, in sort of recent years. And um, and as a scientist from um, uh, from Florida, sort of states, it's like. The, there's no reason why not. They um, they're often found in much colder waters um, than sort of British uh, waters. So yeah, there's no reason why they shouldn't. And we do have seals uh, sort of around our coasts, which are their sort of favourite food. So uh, yeah, why not? I mean, they um, you find them in South Africa, um, which of course have uh, sort of very cold waters um, around the coast, uh, the coast of the uh, Americas as well. They've been seeing them in the uh, the Mediterranean, and um, yeah, it's fairly elementary to uh, sort of see them further up north into uh, sort of British waters. So yeah, it might be um, sort of a thing where we can do some some shark cage diving and see some great white sharks in uh, sort of British waters uh, sort of going forwards. <laughs> Is that a shark? <laughs> I, I can't quite. <laughs> It looks like a shadow. <laughs> I can't see through this browny, greeny, murky water. It would be, it would be much more intense than um, than in sort of South <laughs> Africa because there you can see it like a hundred meters away, sort of coming towards you. You can kind of you can build your confidence and your courage as it sort of gets closer. Whereas here, it's like it's ten meters, and there it is. Um, <laughs> Don't know. Uh, now, obviously, the uh, the article goes on to uh, sort of show the statistics that actually sort of negative uh, sort of shark human interactions are minuscule. Um, so it's probably not going to uh, sort of affect us that much. Um, but also, as we've been sort of saying in uh, sort of recent daily decos, is that the um, the prevalence of killer whales and killer mm -hmm. whales are famous for chasing away great white sharks. So. Um, yeah, I think in the next sort of few months we're going to see some kind of um, sort of underwater, I don't know, battle between the um, the great white sharks coming north, and then you've got the uh, the killer whales coming south from um, uh, from I the told Arctic you. Ocean. Uh, yeah, sort of chasing them away and eating their livers. Uh, like like I said before we recorded, it's going to be the Battle of Hastings Part Two. Yeah, <laughs> just going to go off the coast and see. <laughs> But the thing is, it's the seals' fault. If the seals weren't here, then the sharks wouldn't be here. And then if the sharks weren't here, then we wouldn't have the orcas. <laughs> it's the circle of life. The circle That's of copyright. not how it works <laughs> at all. <clears throat> that is yeah, exactly no, how it, it works. 
because <laughs> I did read in the article years ago, which are basically um, sort of said that uh, sort of great white sharks are kind of warm-blooded, so they can go to much sort of colder waters because they can generate their own body heat. Um, so yeah, there's no reason why they can't sort of be in our waters. Um, one thing that I do know is that that would freak out Julie from um, sort of our old work, Sean. Oh yeah. Because, um, well, I, I was talking to her about it and um, sort of showing, you know, you can, um, there's that website and you can track in like real time uh, sort of tagged great white sharks. Oh, yeah, I yeah, was showing yeah. Her, I was showing her that and um, and she was like, oh, of course, they, they'd never come over here. I was like, I think they're already here. She's like, what? <laughs> And just just a very very short quick Google um, sort of shows that yeah they're they're kind of around um, mm. you see them a lot off um, uh, sort of the Cornish coast and uh, I think off sort of East Anglia as well you can like occasionally see them um, obviously not in huge numbers but um, but yeah they're they're in our waters we reckon so uh, we might be going out on shark dives. That'd be cool. What we'll have to do, because now we're not a part of the EU, what I want to put is a legislation on if there's any sharks in the UK waters, we have to fit them with a speaker that plays the da 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 So then at least we know. <laughs> if we might not be able to see it, but we can hear it. You can hear it. That will just make it awful because <laughs> underwater you have no idea which direction it's coming from and it always sounds as if it's coming from behind you so you'd be swimming and it would just get louder and louder and you don't know where it's coming from <laughs> that would be awful <laughs> that's we can do it now we're not in the eu <laughs> okay uh, oh. uh the final new story uh <laughs> Final news story comes from the um, from the Atlantic Ocean, and this is um, Noah who is uh, proposing new regulations to protect North uh, Atlantic right whales. So, basically, a lot of uh, some North Atlantic right whales are getting caught up in uh, vertical lines from like crab and lobster pots. Because how it works is you have this crab pot. Um, sort of down on the bottom of the ocean you then have a rope that leads up to a buoy that sits on the surface and um, and then the fishermen they sort of put them in and then a few hours or however long later they come along they sort of lift it back up they take the uh, the crabs and the lobsters out and then they put the pot back in unfortunately because you've got these long vertical lines in the water these right whales are just kind of swimming through getting tangled up and then they just end up dying so um, there's been a lot of uh, sort of chaos and backwards and forwards because there was one big court case, I think, um, that found that a huge uh, US lobster fishery actually violated the uh, the Endangered Species Act. Um, and, uh, and there was this huge uh, kind of court debates battle um and basically said that yeah by um sort of may 2021 uh we kind of need to come up with new rules to um to sort of make it more practical and noah are suggesting uh sort of all sorts of things um including increasing a because they they quite like if you have a section of line that's uh substantially weaker than the main section so it will break under a certain amount of strain that way if a whale does get tangled up in it there's a chance that this line is just going to break and then the uh, the whale can uh, sort of swim on um, but um, but what they are saying is that uh, actually we almost need to sort of skip past that because a lot of other uh, environmental agencies are saying you need to stop focusing on this kind of like that the weak line um, because it doesn't always work and um, it, it's not the sort of the most practical use of your sort of time and money. Uh, what we should do is kind of skip to the ropeless um, sort of system that we were discussing the other week on Daily Deco, where it's almost like a remote control crab pot. Um, uh, by using like a acoustic signal you basically throw this pot in that doesn't have any ropes or buoys or anything you throw it in and then when you get back to the area when you want to collect it you sort of send this special code into the water and then a, a little buoy or something inflates inside the crab pot and then that floats up to the surface you collect it you deflate it and then sort of throw it back in uh, so that's what a lot of the uh, sort of environmental uh, sort of side of things kind of want it to go down to mm. but um, yeah they're looking at lots of uh, 
lots of little legislations to make it work for both the the whales and the fishermen because if you do one uh, but not the other then obviously it, it doesn't work um, mm. because the fishermen they're, they're going to do their thing but they're going to sort of do it under the radar and they're going to do it at night um, and the whales are still going to get caught so um, yeah, it's like okay it's, it's a good idea and it is sort of a, a sort of sensible step in the right direction but actually we can go one further and do it one better uh, so yeah um, it's a tricky one yeah I mean one um, so senior attorney Erica Fuller said in a uh, press release ropeless fishing is the only solution that protects whales and fishermen uh, and the rule expands that practice however NOAA must end its reliance on weak rope uh, as a solution to get emergency protections on the water immediately when this rule is finalized so it's yeah it's kind of yeah it, these new sort of regulations because they're limiting like how many can go in the water and sort of mm. where they can go and yeah they have to have this certain length of uh, sort of weak line but um, yeah actually it's a step in the right direction but yeah you can do sort of so much better and um, it'll be more practical for both because yeah the the fishermen they're adding this sort of weak line to their um, sort of lobster pots if something does um, sort of get caught in it and it does sort of break the line they've lost a lot of fishing gear mm. and that's just sort of ghost gear that's just in the uh, sort of ocean so um yeah they're like actually shall we just sort of try and push a little bit further and um really sort of invest a bit more um and um sort of yeah sort of create the, the future of um sort of fishing in these areas that works for both the uh, the fishermen and the whales mm. well hopefully Meh. Something will come out of it, but yeah, like like we were saying, like when when we first mentioned about the the wireless pods and stuff, um, mm. fishermen were well up for it. They've obviously invested yeah. their time because, yeah, like you say, that they, they get their gear back. They're not harming harm the environment, and they're also not getting in trouble by catching or killing something that they shouldn't. Yeah, so it's a, it, yeah. it is a win win. <clears throat> yeah, so they also want to. Um... So they're going to or they want to modify existing seasonal restrictions uh, by adding up to two new seasonal boy line closures. Um, so reducing the amount of fishing. So that's right. You, you can't sort of fish in these um, mm. uh, these seasons, which just means that to be able to maintain their business, the fishermen are just going to do it even more when they can. can. Yeah. Um, one thing which is quite good is to modify gear markings to include state-specific marking colours, um, so it's a bit more obvious sort of who's who, and uh, so that if something does happen, they can sort of trace it back. That's good. Um, and they also want to increase the uh, the number and area of marked lines. Um, so yeah, it's make it as really obvious that if anyone does find this kind of ghost gear later down the line, it's like mm, this is yours. Um, mm. Yeah. So um, yeah, the, the the future, bless it. Hopefully, technology can sort of keep up because they were saying later down in the uh, in the article. Um, so they're they're predicting that the material and labour costs caused by the proposed rule, just not the um, the remote control ones, but just the uh, the, the, the sort of upgraded uh, sort of ones. Uh, they project it's going to cost the um, the industry in the first year somewhere between seven and fifteen million dollars. And you're like, okay, yeah, that's that's pretty expensive. And the um, the sort of the fishermen, they're not really going to be uh, sort of too keen on that. Yeah. Um, but they say that um, last year the um, the industry generated uh, four hundred and eighty five million dollars um, in uh, sort of fishing revenue in Maine alone. So it's like, okay, yeah obviously it's it would be nice for them to not have this additional cost but in the grand scheme of things it's not a huge huge cost for them yeah they can um, afford it yeah well yeah they uh, can hopefully <clears throat> sean can. says you can <laughs> do it you mate. financial advisor do uh, it you can afford it either go weak lines or even better go ropeless do it now i'm your boss <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that's not how it works. It is. <laughs> We've established that's exactly how it works, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's only rope. Rope is cheap. Oh. No. 
<laughs> now yeah. it would be quite interesting um, hopefully I mean they, they don't have long they only have a couple months before um, this sort of May 2021 deadline to uh, to come up with and sort of start this uh, sort of new um, sort of regulations so um, I, I think that of all the people who kind of know what they're doing Noah are quite up there they, they do tend to know quite I a lot know. about what's going on I in know the ocean more. I know more <laughs> Um, so, uh, but yeah, it would be interesting to see, yeah, jump like 10 years in the future and everyone is using remote control lobster pots and no Pacific right whales, um, or Atlantic right whales, sorry, uh, get caught up in these, uh, in these lines because they simply don't exist anymore. And, um, and this channel in 10 years might be on a hundred K. Boom. That's going to be this year. 10 years. End of the year, mate. End of the year. Be optimistic. <clears throat> what was yeah. it? PPA, the, the power of positive attitude. If you say it and you want it to happen, then it will happen. All right. But it's actually not up to us. It's up to you guys. So we'd like you to uh, sort of go down and uh, sort of click on that subscribe button. Uh... <laughs> Do it. <laughs> if you... No. <laughs> Uh, no, if you could, um, then yeah, sort of click on that like button because that just means it shows up on more people's uh, sort of YouTube suggestion page. And um, yeah, hit on that uh, sort of subscribe button as well to see more of our content because we do a lot more than just daily deco. Um, on Friday, we're going to be doing a, a Q and A. Every Friday, we do a Q and A. So if you have any questions that you want us to elaborate on, um, then yeah, pop them down in the comments below, and then we'll sort of cover those. Um, if you have any interesting news story, if you want us to cover anything in particular, uh, then yeah, let us know down in the comments below. Uh, we'll either do like a Saturday surface interval video, uh, which is a bit more sort of fun and lighthearted, or a uh, Sunday kind of deep dive where we spend a bit more time sort of looking at something in particular. If you want us to do anything on one of those, um, yeah, so let us know down in the comments below. Um, yeah, if you've seen anything interesting that you want us to cover, I can see your hand, Sean, don't worry. Um, <laughs> sir, um, sir. If you want us, there will be questions at the end. Um, if you are, yeah, yeah, if you want us to, uh, to cover anything, uh, so any news articles that you spotted that you think we might be quite interesting, yeah, let us know down in the comments below. Right, what do you want to say, Sean? Hi, how's the podcast. it going? No, no, no. But yeah, podcast, Spotify. Yeah. No, so, no, um, now we've got more products or, or we're, we're going to mention products in Daily Deco until we get another sponsor or another offer or something. Um, if there's anything that, like a product that you want to know about a bit more that you okay. maybe Mark might, might want to talk about, let, let us know in the comments. The only, yeah. the only terms and conditions is it has to be on our website. That's the only thing yeah, I would say. Hard for, yeah, it's quite hard for me to talk about a product that I don't Yeah, know. <laughs> the product itself, as long as it's on our website, we can have a, we can have a chin wag about it. Um, yes. Yeah, the new if, Tesla car. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, though, if you wanted to talk about other products, that can go, obviously, in our, in our Q&A. That's the, that, that's the generic. But if you want to know... Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, if you want to know about a, a specific product on our website... Let us know in the comments, and then yeah, maybe we can add it into a into a daily DK. That's all I wanted to say, sir. Yeah. So. All right. Uh, and the podcast, you can uh, sort of listen to this uh, sort of daily as a podcast. So if you're walking to work, <laughs> do you remember that <laughs> commuting to work? It's the truth. Um, or if you just want to walk in the dogs as I usually do, and you listen to podcasts and you want to listen to us in your ears, uh, you can do that wherever you listen to your podcast. You will find us. Just search for uh, sort of simply Google or um, Daily Deco, and uh, yeah, it should. Oh, pardon me, it should pop up. Um, as ever, thank you for watching, everybody, and of course, safe diving. Stay classy, scuba divers. <laughs>